If I wear the Phi Cat badge, don't shoot me, Frank. That was the way Dickinson College student Howard Weber signed the autograph book of his fraternity brother, Frank Sellers, at the very outset of the Civil War. Weber was from the slaveholding state of Maryland. Sellers was from the free state of Pennsylvania. It was late at night on Sunday, April 21, 1861, just one week after Union forces had surrendered, at Fort Sumter in South Carolina. The two young men were crammed together inside Frank's college room in Carlisle, with about two dozen other students. All were trying to decide what to do next. Stay in school or join the army? And if so, which army? Union or Confederate? Many of these young men were Southerners, some even from South Carolina. President Lincoln had already called for 75,000 volunteers, but days before, some of those men had been attacked while traveling through nearby Baltimore, Maryland. The state of Virginia announced it was planning to leave the Union as well. The reaction in Carlisle was nearly pandemonium. One student reported to his father that the small town was thronged with military companies. Local residents were starting to harass Southern students. Townspeople raised Union flags over many buildings, including on the college campus. Rumors flew that locals had even approached the Dickinson president, demanding that Southern students either take an oath of allegiance or leave town. Students petitioned the faculty to suspend their semester. The young men who met together late on Sunday night were fully expecting their college to close. So, that night, they wrote farewell notes to each other. Some were quite poignant. One student even admitted in his journal that he had cried. But others were more playful and seemed eager to experience what they imagined as the adventures of combat. It's hard to know exactly what Howard Weber was thinking when he urged his northern friend not to shoot him. Weber's father was a top Democrat in Maryland who opposed Abraham Lincoln but considered secession to be a form of treason. He had been in Baltimore during the riots against the troops and worried about his son. So, Howard Weber went home and not into the Confederate Army. He remained in Maryland until 1863, when he was forced to register for the Union draft. Then, something unexpected happened. President Lincoln named his uncle, also a leading Democrat, to an important but essentially safe military position in Springfield, Illinois. Howard Weber then went out west, served under his uncle, and even became an ardent supporter of Lincoln's. He lived the rest of his life in Springfield, where he became a prominent local bank president. Not everyone who crowded into Frank Seller's room that night in April 1861 was so lucky. Nineteen of his fraternity brothers wound up fighting for the Confederacy. Fifteen served in the Union military. Many of them experienced terrible hardships. And at least four did not survive the conflict. Dickinson College remained open throughout the Civil War, but the school struggled mightily and was even briefly occupied by Confederate troops in June 1863. Nobody could have predicted any of it back in April 1861.